Um, so you might be seeing this on your trees too, whether they are the trees in your woods or the trees in your landscape, which is I think generally where people see them. Um, so today I'm gonna be talking about maple leaf blister. And if you're noticing black leaves on your red or silver maple um, in the early summer, it could be maple leaf blister, which is a fungal foliar disease that can cause dead leaves, uh, dead patches on your leaves, and sometimes defoliation, so dropping of those leaves. In this edition of What's Bugging My Tree, I'm going to talk a little bit about maple leaf blister, what it looks like, potential lookalikes that are also occurring right now, and what does this mean for your trees? So what is maple leaf blister? Well, it's caused by a fungus in the genus Tephrina, and the fungus overwinters in the bud scales of the tree and then infects new leaves as they emerge. Um, infection severity is really determined by weather conditions when the buds are opening. <clears throat> if the conditions are cool and wet, right when those leaves are emerging, there's going to be more disease that year. And this varies year to year. So you may wonder, where did this come from? It came out of nowhere. Uh, where it came from was that it was sitting there waiting. Maybe it was a little bit of disease in past years. But if we get conducive weather conditions, which we seem to have be getting more frequently, um, that cool, wet weather in the spring, um, then you can get more disease. So if conditions are really conducive to disease, you can get high levels of infection, high levels of this um, kind of black symptoms on the leaves, and even leaf drop, um, trees dropping a large number of leaves. Um, but that's relatively rare. More frequently, what you're going to be seeing are leaf spots that can vary in color from kind of brownish to grayish to dark black. These symptoms typically start out green, like little green raised uh, blisters, thus the name uh, maple leaf blister. Um, so those green patches, then those will turn colors over time as that tissue dies um, to these black colors. Um, and Typically with maple leaf blister, it will be darker black on the outside and lighter on the inside of those patches, but they can all coalesce and grow together as well. Um, so if you've got a lot of disease, and this is the case in this picture uh, from a homeowner uh, that their tree, you know, they thought their tree was dying. Um, but what really is happening here is a severe infection. So those, those leaves are black and distorted. If you look up close, um, those dead blotches in the leaves, um, they have this irregular shape. In my mind, it almost looks like, you know, there's ink on them or uh, they kind of melted in some way, um, very distinctive. But there are some lookalikes that you might see this time of year as well. And I think the most common one that we're also seeing right now is anthracnose. Um, anthracnose is, again, another fungal leaf issue that is really promoted by uh, wet cool weather in the spring. So if we had wet, cool weather in the spring, not only can we expect to see more maple leaf blister, we can expect to see more anthracnose as well. Um, and they look really similar. In general, anthracnose symptoms are slightly different. It tends to follow along leaf veins a little bit more, and it can move into the petioles, into the new shoots of trees, as well as be on these leaves. Uh, whereas you see the maple leaf blister has kind of a different look to it. But if you're looking at you know, the canopy of your tree, they could look really similar. So this is anthracnose, um, but it very easily could be maple leaf blister from a distance. Distance. Although you can kind of see that pattern of, in this case, the dead patches that are caused by anthracnose following along the veins. Um, the good news is that anthracnose, like maple leaf blister, is typically not a major health issue for your trees. It can look bad and certainly it can cause some damage if it's moving into those new shoots. But with maple, it's more likely to stay on those leaves. You might have some leaf dropping, um, but those trees will put out another flush of leaves and be fine. Uh, another thing that sometimes when people are uh, seeing these symptoms will confuse it with is maple tar spot. 
Uh, maple tar spot is another fungal disease um, that again is promoted by what? Uh, that wet weather. Uh, and with maple tar spot though, you'll see these black spots on the surface of the leaves. It looks like someone has spotted some tar on there and that there are these raised black spots. But typically this happens later in the summer, even into the early fall. Um, and again, good news, this is not a health issue for your trees. If your trees have maple tar spot, um, that's a totally normal annual occurrence. Usually it's not too bad. There's not too much of it. Some years you'll get more of it, um, but it's not something that's gonna hurt the health of your trees. Um, a couple other things to note is that the fungus that causes maple leaf blister is actually closely related to other fungi in that same genus that can cause symptoms on other plants. So that same Tephrina genus has species that can infect oak leaves and cause oak leaf blister, that can infect peaches and cause peach leaf curl, um, and others. And so you can see that same blistering. And in this case, you have blistering, but also that distorted leaf growth. So they look a little bit different from your maple leaf blister, but in that same family. And these are all promoted by those cool, wet spring conditions as well. So management, what do you do if you have maple uh, leaf blister? Well, while this looks bad, these trees typically will put out another flush of leaves in a few weeks and recover just fine. You can expect more disease when conditions are cool and wet in the spring like we've been having when those leaves are just emerging. That's when they're gonna be susceptible to the fungus. The fungus can infect them and cause disease. Uh, but once those leaves are fully developed and they're a little harder, a little waxier, uh, that fungus is not gonna be able to infect them. So they're gonna be resistant to that infection and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So while people do use fungicide sprays for some of these Tephrina species, I mentioned peach leaf curl and others, um, they're not merited for control of maple leaf blister. In addition, timing is really key because what those fungicides are doing is they are preventing that damage to begin with. So it's really important that they're applied before those leaves emerge. So anything you do now wouldn't change the symptoms that you're currently seeing. Um, it's, it's something that would be done to prevent next year's symptoms. Um, because maple leaf blister is no cause for concern in your tree, you don't really need to worry, but you may want to make sure that it's maple leaf blister or anthracnose and not something more serious that's going wrong with your tree. Um, in addition, if this is something you're seeing every year and you're concerned about or just don't like, there are some things that you can be doing to promote air circulation so that that moisture is less likely to be held to those leaves. Um, maybe some pruning that will improve that as well as anything that promotes the overall health of your tree. Um, for landscape trees, things like mulching properly around the base of the tree or watering during periods of drought, while they seem small, really help those trees uh, grow and defend themselves against those minor stressors that can turn into big deals in the future. So with that, I want to thank you for joining me and learning a little bit more about maple leaf blister. Hopefully, if you see maple leaf blister on your trees, you can now breathe a sigh of relief that your trees are not actually dying, um, that this is maple leaf blister and will probably be gone in a few weeks. Um, but if you're seeing something that's concerning you, I encourage you to reach out to your county extension agents or other knowledgeable professionals in your community. Uh, thanks for joining me today. And if you'd like to learn more, make sure to check us out online or follow us on social media.